Hey guys, that's your coming out today, Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. I'm glad to have you all here with me today. What could be better, guys? Talking some Ray Shadow Legends. Hey, you know what? Uh, yesterday's video, I briefly mentioned that I got absurdly lucky. I opened one shard, one sacred shard, one shard, and I didn't record it, and I'm kicking myself. I need to record everything. I need to record everything. Why did I do it? I wanted to share that moment with you guys, but from one, all I had was one shard for the escalating event. I, I pulled it, and I actually got super lucky, and I got my hands on Wallmaster Authorian. So today, I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, how good this champion is. Right out the gate, I'm just going to tell you. He's super, super good. Hey, I wanted to give a big shout out. I have to. I hate to mention this again because I'm not trying to, like, campaign here. I didn't even vote for myself. However, uh, a lot of you guys are hitting me up. Uh, Roger O'Neill, you got my vote. Best of luck and uh, keep content creating fun. Fan from Trinidad. Hey, shout out to all my Trinidadian viewers out there. Uh, voting for me for creator of the year or whatever in uh, in the community awards. I have 32% at the time of his vote. I imagine Hades has, like, 65% percent <laughs> Or more, or more. I'm I'm forecasting a second place finish for yours truly there, and honestly, I'm flattered uh, even to be in the conversation truly. Anyway, back to Wallmaster. Why is this dude so good? He's a legendary attack. He looks awesome. I mean, yo, what up, Wallmaster? What up? How you feeling? How you living over there, dude? I love his armor. I just something about it. Something about the aesthetic, the colors, the robe, the purple. I don't know what it is, but I like it. I like it. On his A1, he's got Skyfall Arrow, an AOE attack. On his A1, will not trigger counterattacks, which is great, uh, especially against like the Poison Spider. Doom Tower, right? Not to worry about those counterattacks, Curse City, whatever. Uh, fills this champion's turn meter by 5% for each living enemy after the attack. So 20% turn meter fill against Hydra Clan Boss, where this dude is a monster. I want to throw it to you guys. Uh, what do you think after watching this video? Let me know in the comments. At the end, tell me if you think he's a top, an S tier, a true S tier Hydra Clan Boss champion. Uh, on the A2, another AoE, but it's an AoE times two hit, and it's an enemy max HP ability. It scales off of attack and enemy max HP. I will say, though, multipliers from the AoE on the A1 are very weak, but it's still an AoE on the A1, right? Uh, on the A2, though, Falcon Shot, AoE times two hitter. First hit has a 100% chance of placing a block bust for two turns. Second hit, decrease attack for two turns. Fills his champion's turn meter by 5% for each living enemy after the attack again. So he's got this built in take extra turn, well, not extra turns, extra turn meter. <laughs> he does have an extra turn, though, on the A3. Forever Mark. He's bringing an increased attack, increased accuracy, and increased speed for three turns on a four turn cooldown, then grants himself an extra turn. Oh my god, this is a juicy kit, is it not? You can see the synergy here. First of all, he's getting turn meter fill, turn meter fill, gets back to this ability, extra turn, leads into more turn meter fill, more turn meter fill. You know, you guys can see it really snowballs beautifully, so he's taking a ton of freaking turns, right? Forever marked, specifically, like, all these buffs are essential and awesome for this champion, right? But especially increased accuracy I love, because these two debuffs, block buffs and, and decrease attack, are two of the most essential debuffs for Hydra Clan Boss. He has them both, but we really want everything on this dude, right? Even though he's got enemy max HP, which is capped 10% on his A2 ability, uh, we still want attack, right? Because it scales off of attack as well and is A1. So we want to really build him with a lot of speed, a lot of crit rate, crit damage, obviously. Uh, but it's tough to get all that and accuracy on champions sometimes, especially depending on your gear, how long you've been playing. So I love that you can increase the accuracy for three turns on a four turn cooldown. It's great that extra turn does strip away one of those turns as well. So keep that in mind. His passive, no food, foe, <laughs> no foo, no foe, too great. Increase this champion's max HP by 20% for each enemy killed or Hydra head decapitated by this champion. Stacks up to 50,000. I love love this because check out his base HP. It's pretty dang low. He's very squishy, but the 20% increase up to 50,000 extra HP and newsflash, this dude's attacking so much because of the, the AOEs and the, and the more AOEs and the enemy, he's going to kill or decapitate a lot of freaking Hydra heads, right? So we're going to get that as the battle goes on and some of these battles can be the one I'm about to show you guys going to take an hour. I'm going to cut, right? Uh, he'll be, you know, sitting really pretty by the end. You don't have to, won't have to worry as much about his health and the duration of a longer battle. The reviews in game so far are very kind to this champion as they ought to be. Spider's Den, campaign locations, Hydra Clan Boss for obvious reasons and all of the above. Uh, let's go ahead and I actually want to start out by running him. I'm going to show you the build because I think that I, I think there's one superior build for this champion personally, personally. Uh, but I, I will hear you guys out, right? You could go Relentless, you could go Lethal, you could go Savage, right? But I didn't go any of those routes. 
What route did you think I do you guys think I went? I think this dude was absolutely, or I should say reflex, absolutely made for this dude, right? Uh D it reduced, excuse me, the random skill cooldown by one turn, 40% chance after its buff a year or two ago now. It feels like just yesterday, right? So why is reflex so good? Obviously, you do run the risk that that cooldown could go to the A3 ability. But the nice thing about the A3 ability is even if it reduces this cooldown, it's also gonna pop and reduce the cooldown of the A2 vis-a-vis -vis the extra turn that you get from it, right? So the reflex proc might go to the A2, where you get an enemy max HP times two hitter on a two turn cooldown, essentially, right? That's insane, or at least reduces the cooldown. And then or it might go to the A3, where you get this down to a two turn or whatever the heck, and you get an extra turn anyway, right? So I really, really love Reflex, generally speaking, especially on this champion. Moreover, the reason I don't want him in Relentless and I do want him in Reflex is because the extra turns, although they're always a nice thing, it's going to continuously strip buffs off of him, right? Not just these buffs, right? But every other buff that everybody else is putting on him, right? So one thing that I'm trying to do on all my Hydra Clan boss teams, if, if I'm running a lot of champions in reflex sets, uh, excuse me, in relentless sets, a lot of extra turns. I'm really trying to incorporate a buff extender on all of those teams, right? So a Krisk or a Lady Makage, wherever you have access to, there's a lot of them out there, right? I'm trying to bring one of those in just to mitigate all those extra turns. Cause sometimes, especially if you're going like full auto, sometimes you don't recognize how many turns you're, you're or how many buffs you're actually losing there. Anyway, so how do I have them built? To be a nuker, right? To be a fast nuker in reflex gear. We have 245, 109, 232 on the crit rate, crit damage. His accuracy is super low, 224, but he does have that increased accuracy. It's still a bit too low the accuracy so I could just go in there and uh put an accuracy banner on him I have an attack one right now with a trip speed really don't want to lose all that speed but I will uh TBD I might change things around a little bit there I do have a perception set the fact that we have a perception set on this dude uh with a trip roll 47 accuracy on the on the amulet and he's still at 224 that's pretty rough <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you guys uh he does have attack on the ring as well uh we could go more survivability but we have a nice double roll of uh of HP on that ring anyway we have crit damage on the gauntlets we have attack percentage on the chest and we have speed on the boots masteries i'm playing with fire here again guys because i did go war master and defense tree i went defense because i want to get retribution and i want to get deterrence i want those counter attacks i want those extra attacks with the a1 because it's aoe aoe damage right against hydra clan boss why not uh so i did go defense for that reason also can mitigate some damage with blast proof help us out in the beginning of the battle before he's able to ramp up that hp on the passive on the support side of things i would obviously go with all the uh the accuracy masteries uh i would probably end with lasting gifts i, I would definitely want to get a tier five lasting gifts that way we can extend the duration of those buffs that he has on the a3 uh and hopefully you know last with the cooldowns anyway uh on the offensive side of things i came down and i picked up war master right so for basically a hydra clan boss build here uh i do want to start out in the arena though why because it's a high elf so some of you might know where i'm going here i am a massive fan a massive fan, I did a whole video on her, uh, of Fina Blade of Avaria. She's the faction lord, right? I recognize this is not a very uh, relatable team for 99% of viewers right now, but I just, I, I want to show this because I want to show you the beginnings of what could be a faction-oriented team, right? Now, this doesn't just apply to the arena. This can apply anywhere in the game, but I can definitely see a future where we see a lot more of this in Raid Shadow Legends. So, if there's three faction, if there's four high elves on the team, which isn't bad, because there's six people on the Hydra, six champions on a Hydra team. So it gives you two flex spots, right? If you wanted to run a high elf Hydra team. And again, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to do it run an arena team, but it's something that could happen like in the near future. And Final Blade of Avaria is definitely incredibly underrated right now. I mean, not a lot of people have her, but she's still a beast. If you have a full team here, increase attack, increase crit rate, increase crit damage on all allies, right? With an extra turn, with a cleanse, and the buffs are all protected on a three turn cooldown, right? But it's really this passive lead from the front. Whenever a buff is placed on an ally, fills their turn by three percent okay one faction ally 25 percent more damage when attacking out of their turn okay two faction allies whenever a buff is removed stolen or from an ally or when it expires fills their turn here by 10 percent amazing and then three faction allies is where it all comes together allies will ignore five percent of targets defense for each buff on them so if you have 10 buffs quick math that means you're ignoring 50 percent defense built in on top of Sa a savage helm smash or whatever so we're running her with uh we're running him with final blade of avaria in the arena in a blender comp so you guys Guys already know the ally attacker that we have on the team there's only one <laughs> and his name is loranathil or uh, uh, why do i always say loranathil i'm so sorry you guys must hate me even more than usual lana rath <laughs> lana Theral. 
Loranophil? It sounds like some sort of medicine you take. Uh, give him 40 milligrams of Loranophil. He's gonna need it. Lonotheril! Lonotheril, Doc! Give me the right meds! All right, he's got the ally attack. We know. Okay, so this is our team. We get Arbiter going into Fina, going into ally attack, and everybody's dead, hopefully, right? If all goes according to plan, and we don't... We might go second here, right? My, oh, okay, we go first. Great. So check it out. Uh... Let me make myself a little bit smaller. I feel like I'm hogging all the camera space here. So we're going to go with, obviously, the A3 because we get an extra turn, right? Look at all these protected buffs. It's beautiful to look at, isn't it? So we want to get as many buffs as humanly possible onto the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, so we're going to smack him up with all this stuff, right? And now we're going to ally attack uh, right here. So here's his first AoE. Well, you could barely see it. It was off. It was off camera. But boom, I mean, there's so much ignore defense going on there. Uh, now, with all that being said, I, I want to be clear here. I don't look at him as a an arena beast, right? Uh, that A1 is just not hard hitting enough for him to even fit on most blender comps as a first option. Frankly, I'd probably rather have the sisters, you know? But in a team with Fina, with all that ignore defense, and he doesn't have Helm Smasher, he doesn't have Savage or Lethal, so we're leaving 50% ignore defense off the table here in this demonstration, right? But there's possibilities... There's possibilities. In the video that I did on these champions, uh, I did it on... Okay, so not a ton of damage there, but here's here's the A2. No, well, we could go in with the... He already has increased attack, and I don't feel like we need the increased accuracy. Let's just go with the A2 right now, and then we can take the extra turn, right? On the next move and reduce the cooldown of the A2. That's his A1 on a counterattack. So she has counterattack on her A2. I didn't even show you guys. Uh, but counterattack on a champion with the AoE on the A1, like you're starting to see why I like this team so much, right? She has a single target. Fina has a single target counterattack. Now we can take the extra turn. We can come back in here. Our A2 is ready, of course, going against UDK. So bad affinity matchup there, but you guys get the point, right? Really fun, right? It's uh, he's a cool champ. Now I, I want to be clear here too. This dude is not limited to just to only uh Hydra Clan boss, right? That's where I'm most excited about him personally. But let's just pull him up on Hell Hades and see where they rank him. So a perfect five out of five rating on hellhades.com. Dude, I wasn't even expecting. I mean, I was expecting big, but five out of five. He's one of like 20 champions they give a five out of five to in a game with almost a thousand champions now. They give him a five out of five in clan boss, Hydra, Doom Tower, Waves, Spider, Spider Hard, Dragon, Ice Golem, Dragon, Ice golem frost spider i mean he's an enemy max hp champion right his multipliers are a 2.5 on the aoe on the a1 that's actually not that bad they do give it a weak overall grading though uh i was it feels more like a 2 or a 1.5 you'll see it in a moment in hydra he has a 1.5 on the a2 plus the 0 0.35 enemy max hp it is a godlike damage rating in hydra it scores a 27th in the game i do want to be clear though if you look at the enemy max hp ability it is a two-time hitter keep that into in, in mind but it's a point a uh, zero point zero three five where when we look at like a royal guard or a husk we're looking at zero uh, point one zero point one so basically three times ish stronger on the enemy max hp of a normal aoe enemy max hp champion so it's not hitting quite as hard as you might be anticipating it's not an acrisia double aoe attack as a matter of fact acrisia has the same thing zero point one enemy max hp times two so acrisia is quite significantly stronger on her aoe enemy max hp however that's not going to mitigate his overall damage well i guess it would technically but it's still going to be he's still a beast he's still a beast so yeah guys again uh, on takedown on royal guard we're looking at a two attack plus a a tenth of an enemy max hp which again is about three ish times as, po as powerful as one of the hits of wall master i hope that makes sense anyway let's go ahead and bring him into battle we finally killed udk let's go ahead and bring him into battle here guys uh on hydra clan boss right so uh keep in mind with hydra clan boss i think you guys already probably know this but it, it bears repeating right is enemy max hp champions are best on nightmare and brutal okay because they have so much more max hp the hydra heads right whereas we get to hard and normal we would actually gravitate towards hp burn in instant activations and a little bit away from enemy max hp not to say that they can't still be effective enemy max hp champions just that they're more effective on the more challenging stages now if you can't get there yet if you're just you know 
barely one king normal or whatever three king whatever the heck you're doing might be it doesn't not gonna matter you're gonna use this guy anywhere right so for that reason we're gonna go brutal and i'm actually gonna stick him on my brutal team this is it all right guys so here we go let's do it i just want to make sure do i have no other no better speed aura than mighty uko i guess i don't uh Let's see what he can do, right? Now, I'm going to come back to you guys at the end of this video. I'm going to cut, obviously. Uh, but let's just watch a few of his hits, right? Let's take it off. Uh, let's take it. I have Cupidus and Venus on the same team. So I figured like a ton uh, and Mighty Uko. So I have so many AoEs on A1s that it's actually a shame. I should put like an ally Sunbearer or an ally attacker on this team instead of somebody. But it's like instead of who, right? This team feels pretty dang well balanced, uh, if you ask me. Anyway, we get an extra turn here. Uh, there he goes. Boom. Went in with the A1 just there. Uh, well, we have the fear. Let's see if we can uh, go A2. Boom. So again, 64 AK or, or, or so damage times two hitter, right? Uh, not as much as you might have been expecting. Now, keep in mind, there was no debuffs. So now we go in and again, boom, just popping off there. All right, let's go with some provoking hex. So now we have all the debuffs on, right? And shame on me, I didn't even open with the A3. I was so eager to see the damage on the A2 that I didn't at least buff him. Ash, come on, bro. I almost want to restart, but let's just go with it. So here's the A3. Uh, A3 is going to be a self-buffing move. Now we can come in with the A2 again. Now let's slow it down. Check out the animation. Let's check out the damage. Now we actually have uh, the debuffs up. So we're looking at 150 times 2 on every Hydra head, you know? It's pretty dang solid, right? And obviously, he's going to be able to keep these buffs up a lot you know all right let's go in with the a2 here and let's give him like you know let's give him one more go round i just loved the idea i already mentioned it but i love the idea of putting cupidus venus and mighty uko all on the same team with him and just have aoe's everywhere right we're looking at around 30k damage or so from that a1 so uh again not super hard hitting but hey we have obviously hex applied on everybody uh so some damage sharing going on and uh it's gonna it's gonna add up uh a lot over time let's try that a2 one more time and then i will just put it on full auto the entire battle and we'll see how he does all right here we go now i really screwed up things with his a3 by not doing it first because now we're without the buffs I almost feel like I should just restart. Uh, I will. Boom. There we go. Nah, wh whatever. Who cares? Let's just run it. Let's just run it. All right, guys. Not too bad. Let's see how he does at the end of this. I do I do want to point out I have an empowered and fully awakened Cupidus on this team. I fully expect Cupidus, who's an absolute monster the way that I have him built, right? In Relentless Gear, by the way, with Venus on the same team, so he's counterattacking every time. Plus, he gets the damage bonus off his passive. So if we can even stay in the same stratosphere as my Cupidus, we will be good to go. Cupidus smacks the way that I have him built on this team. Uh, but so far... So good, I will say. And keep in mind, he's upping. He just decapitated a head or two. He's already upping his max HP as well, which is going to be helpful because we do have that revive turned off. But I'll try to keep an eye on things on the sidelines here. He does finally get back into the groove here. Uh, anyway, I'm getting sucked in, man. I'm getting sucked in. I'll cut here. Let's see what this dude can do. Be right back. Oh! All right, guys, we are at the end of the battle. We have 434 million damage, not too bad. And Authorian out damaged Cupidus with Venus, fully awakened, as I said. That to me is absolutely crazy. I am not disappointed with these results. Uh, this number, 434 million, is insane on brutal difficulty. Uh, for me, at least, it's obviously nowhere near like record setting or anything like that. But uh, I'm really happy with this team. You know, overall, damage wise, in Athorian has really impressed me, guys. Let me know what you think of this champion. Thank you for watching till the end of the video. Much love. And as always, take care, guys.